Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Tuesday, the 16th of May. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Johnny McFarlane. How are we doing, Johnny? I'm good, mate. I'm uh, what they call demob happy uh, because I'm on holiday as of tomorrow. So I've got a few things to tick, a wee box of to do, a, a, a large to-do list there. And once I get through that, mate, whew, I'm done. I'm going. But going anywhere exotic, Johnny? I'm going to Italy to wow. a, Tuscan, a Tuscan hillside town called Barga. So um, hopefully none of you punters are going to show up and uh, and, and and ask me to buy you drinks or uh, to talk about football because I'm switching off, mate. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and read some books and catch up on all mm. things I've missed for the last four months and uh, put my feet up. That's the plan. Yeah. I was going to say there we're expecting some daily TikToks uh, over there if you if you don't mind if if you if you get that time. <laughs> There'll be food videos of that you yeah, can be yeah. guaranteed. Follow me on Twitter; they will be coming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, folks, uh, fo- people are tuning in because they want to talk all things Rangers. Um, before we do that, um, I just noticed a message on, on YouTube yesterday. We've got a lot of donations uh, on the old Super Chat function, so thanks to each and every one of you um, for uh, helping support the channel and donating uh, to the work we do. But there was a, a question I noticed. Um, it said, that Derek, you should clarify where the Super Chat money goes. I've seen people asking if it goes directly to the club. Uh, you're taking advantage of older guys who don't understand YouTube. Um, well, I can tell you, buddy, um, it just goes straight to uh, the Ranger Review and uh, all the work that we do here to try and help support um, ourselves covering uh, the club. Of course, we have uh, daily video briefings uh, on the channel um as well as all the the, the match reaction stuff as well so it, it goes totally to ourselves and trying to support and sustain uh, the work we do and not to the club as i've seen uh, some people suggesting um so there you go hopefully that clears that up uh, and also what want to make you aware as well if you haven't uh, uh, if you aren't already aware if you've not subscribed to the rangers review website just now we've got our best ever offer on just £12 for 12 months worth of content, a whole year's uh, uh, content for you, exclusive uh, access to all the content on the website. Just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe to sign up. Not only that, you'll, enter, you'll be entered into the draw for a lunch for free at the Blue Sky Lounge restaurant with a club legend as well. So it really is a, a cracking deal. Uh, you need to head over and get yourself subscribed if you haven't already done so. There's also an offer for £4 for four months there available also. Um, so yeah, a couple of outstanding deals there on the website uh, if you haven't already taken advantage of it. Right, let's talk uh, Rangers. Um, if you, well, if you want to subscribe to the website just now, you'll find a cracking interview on there um, from Ian King um, with uh, Morris Edu, uh, who talks uh, all things Rangers about his time at Ibrox. And he also touches on Malik Tillman, Johnny. Um, of course, he's uh, uh, just scooped the uh, young PFA Young Player of the Year award uh, at the weekend. Uh, and he was asked about uh, Malik and, of course, uh, a lot of talk about potentially coming back to Rangers on, on a permanent basis. Um, and uh, he was speaking uh, about uh, Malik. He says that activating the clause, he has done everything on his part to justify why it would make sense for Rangers to do it. I don't know where his ambitions lie, low, or if he's happy to continue to live and play in plain Scotland. But as a Rangers fan, I want to see him continue to do well for the club. Um Obviously, Mo Edu wants to see him sign, sign for Rangers. Uh, Johnny Malik also was uh, asked about uh, his future uh, when he was picking up that award. He says, I had a great time here and it might not be the end, so we'll see what's going to happen in the summer. I don't know. It's 50-50. It's up to Rangers, up to Bayern and up to me, so it's completely open. I'm going to speak to Michael Beale in the next couple of days and see what he's saying, see what Bayern are saying, and then I will decide. Your thoughts, Johnny? Well, I think I've been on record as saying I would keep uh, Malik Tillman for the reasons that I've outlined many times before. I think he's got a very, very high ceiling, really, really talented player and will only get better as time goes on. People have to remember with Tillman that he is playing his first season. Um, He's only had four appearances at Bayern. So the guy just isn't used to the ups and downs of um, first-team football. He is very much a youth product. And if you think about a Rangers youth product that came through the academy here, if they were performing like Malik Tillman is performing, then you know there'd be extreme excitement about what he was going to be bringing to the table over the years ahead. 
as Michael Beale says, five or six million might be a lot of money for, for Malik Tillman. I think it's 5.8 million. That's what I was told, certainly, when the, the deal was uh, struck back uh, at the start of the season. Um, it's not a lot in terms of the grand scheme of football, you know. It's 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 peanuts for a Premier League team. It, that's a, that's a, a gamble, really. It's a roll of the dice. It's not a guy that needs to come in and and be a huge success right away. So, I would definitely do that deal if I could. I think long term it'll work out. But but guys, there's another thing to this, which is Bayern. If they do sell him, will have a buyback clause. Yeah. And so, so, so don't be thinking that this deal, if it was to go ahead, that, that Tillman would arrive in Scotland, uh, play well for the next two years, and then be sold down south for twenty-five million. That won't happen. It, it won't happen. This is not a deal that you would do to make money down the line. Really, I think the buyback clause would be around nine or ten million pounds from Bayern. So that would mean that that you're you're only making a small profit and, and kind of clawing back the wages probably if he stays for a couple of years. Um, and a little bit more on top of that. So this is never going to be a huge money spinner for Rangers because if he comes in and does well and there's chat of English Premier League clubs being interested because obviously they keep a close eye on Scottish football, then I think Bayern would be the ones that would reactivate that clause, bring them back to Germany and then sell them on. So they'd be the ones that would reap the benefit. And that's just the way it is. Bayern Munich are not a stupid club by any means. They know exactly what they're doing. So they've got that really to, to some extent stitched up. So I think that's got to take part of the, the conversation when you're talking about Tillman and and what he could potentially do if he was signed. Derek, I'm, I'm hearing though that he won't sign. Um, yeah. You know, I've heard from a couple of people now that that ultimately Malik sees his future elsewhere. He's really enjoyed his time at the club, but uh, there's interest from top five leagues in him. I'm not surprised at that. Um, look at his talent. It's it's straightforward why there would be people that would want to snap him up at that kind of price. And uh, I think he sees the idea of coming back to Rangers and playing week in, week out against the likes of uh, the, the lower lights of the Premiership as, as not being really something that's going to stretch him or develop him further as much as it's benefited him in the short term this season. So I'd be very surprised personally if Malik Tillman agrees to come. The deal's done in terms of Bayern Munich and Rangers. That's been in place since the summer. Yeah. So it's now actually on Tillman himself to decide if if he thinks that his future can be best um, brought to its, its full potential at Rangers. I suspect, you know, he's 20 years old. It's his first loan. I think that he will want to um, go somewhere else and test himself in another league, uh, a better league, and see if he can accelerate his development even further than what he's done. So I just don't think Malik Tillman is one that's going to come to fresh and Derek. But, mm. you know, um, you never say never in football. It could happen, but I'd be surprised. I don't think there's going to be any lack of intention or desire for the club. I think it's clear Michael Beale wants to, wants to bring him back. I can totally understand why when he says that he's got the highest ceiling of anyone he's ever worked with at Rangers. That, that tells you exactly how he rates them. And let's, let's face it, Michael Beale spent his entire career working with youth players, so he knows um, what a high ceiling is. And yeah. uh, if he says that, then then you know he's an exciting prospect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get to a few of the comments that are coming in. First of all, uh, Scott says, uh, great feed at the Blue Sky Lounge was there on Friday and seen Johnny and Joshua. Uh, there you go. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. That, that, that prize, as I mentioned, they're on offer. Um, sensational. A lunch for three on the 3rd of June with a club legend. Absolutely magnificent. Um, just on Tillman, uh, Graham Mitchell says, um, Hi guys, I'm a no for Tillman. We need to use the money wisely. He's not done enough in the big games for me. Um, Ross Nielsen also, just on the back of that, he says, uh, what's the point if we aren't going to make a substantial profit on Tillman? He hasn't changed big games so far. Who's to say he would? Um, listen, I'm like you, Johnny. I, I, I'd be surprised if we've seen Malik Tillman uh, appearing for Rangers uh, next season. But I think, uh, as you mentioned, I think uh, he is destined for the top, this boy. Um, it's his first full season in, in, in professional football, senior football playing uh, consecutively, consistently. Um, and I think he's yeah, he's going to play for, uh, may not be Bayern Munich, but yeah, you're right. I think one of the top five leagues in Europe 
um, and I think he's destined for for great things. Um, let's get to a few other points that are coming in here just now. One directed at you, Johnny, from Billy McCulloch. He says, uh, Johnny, you said last week, get cash back on Ridvan and move on. Still the same opinion after Saturday. I'm starting to doubt myself. I've got to be honest. I thought he was superb <laughs> in the game. Really, really good. Like, I think Rangers need to make bring in money from somewhere. The, the club will stump up. I think we'll see some investment uh, from the club, and, and, and I would expect it to be in the tune of, 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 of similar to what we spent last year, about £15 million. Um, but I think there'll be more than that needed, to be honest. Uh, I suppose it depends on how much is done on free transfers, because six or seven million pounds will be freed up on the wage bill by by the department players. Um, I still think there will be more money needed to be uh, generated, and that means selling players with with market value. And you know, to sell players with market value, you probably have to depart with players you, you want to keep. But if Ridvan could keep up that level of performance, then I don't think you'd want him to be going anywhere, uh, Billy. So to answer your question. Um, yeah, I think in an ideal world you would probably want to keep Ridvan on the back of that because that was a that was a top top performance and and and, and dripping with potential at twenty one. So uh, yeah, uh, he slightly changed my mind. I have to be honest and say that. Um, but you get to the summer, some some hard choices might have to be made, and and if that's the case, then that's the case. Yeah, uh, right, let's get to a few interesting points that are coming in. First, one taking uh, issue at me, Stevino Cadino says, I couldn't handle the big games, Derek, but destined for the top eye. Okay. Uh, uh, listen, I think that's taken a wee bit out of context. Yeah, he has struggled uh, against Celtic uh, this season for Rangers. But listen, I think uh, we're going to be talking about Malik Tillman uh, playing for some of the, the best teams uh, in Europe uh, during his career. Listen, he's, he's 20 years of age. This is his first big... Uh, he's at Bayern Munich, for, for heaven's sake, for a start. He, he's uh, highly regarded there. Uh, he's already at the top. That's the thing, Stevino. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's at Bayern. He's, he's at yeah. one of the top, you know, 10 clubs in I get, Europe. I get his point that, he, that I mean, that there was... Uh, it hasn't really turned it on against Celtic, but there's not many that has prior to yeah. Saturday, of course, this season. So I think it's some of the criticism, perhaps... Slightly unfair on, on on Malik this season with regards to uh, those Celtic games, but yeah, I can certainly see him appearing in, in big games uh, down the line. Um, interesting point from uh, Francis who, who raises this. I'll, I'll pose this to you, uh, Johnny. Uh, Nubly from Livy would be a great buy. I know people will doubt this, but I'm sure he'd be amazing and surprise a lot of people. Uh, I've always been impressed. A big physical unit for, for Livingston. Uh, every time I've, I've seen him, Johnny, I'm not entirely sure uh, he'd be suited for Rangers right enough. Yeah, not for me, mate. Um, I've got to be honest. Uh, I think he's a big, honest pro who will do well in the SPFL. But uh, Rangers, that's a big jump, and I don't see that uh, coming off. That's not to say he's he, he's not a player capable of causing problems uh, in in the games between the two teams. But uh, I think Rangers need to be setting their uh, stall a little bit higher in terms of their transfer targets. Yeah. Um... There's an interesting point that's been raised by uh, Gotcha 2.0. He says, uh, is Bonner finished at the club with the likes of Sterling coming in? Um, that's an interesting one. I spoke to uh, someone at BBC Stoke yesterday. That uh, video will be coming out shortly, folks. Just on uh, Dujon Sterling. A little snippet as well on Jack Butland. Um, by all accounts, um, Dujon can play both uh, right and left back. Um, very comfortable with both feet. Um, with the, I think it's... Uh, We've seen this with, with the number of Rangers, well, number of targets that uh, we're seeing being identified. They, they can't play in those uh, hybrid positions, Johnny. Uh, it's it's yeah. no surprise that, that, that Dujon is a player that Rangers have identified. Yeah. But does this mean Bonn has finished it at the club? But after Ridvan's performance on Saturday, could you see Borna moving out in the summer? I, th I think uh, right off Borna Barisic at your petal, because uh, whenever we've done it in the past, he seems to bounce back. I wouldn't be surprised if the club looked to move him on. I think probably Borna maybe sees his, his future elsewhere. He's been a long time and he's getting to an age where if he's going to make a big move, probably this is his last chance to do it. So you look at what Borna brings in terms of that, that left foot, it's a wand, and if you get him in the right positions, then there's few better. The, the quality he puts in the box is terrific. But um, he's also quite limited. He's very one-footed um so so he's a guy that you'd have to say there's potential to to improve upon 
uh, especially if you want to add a new dimension to the attack. And, uh, you know, one year left in his deal, it just seems to be obvious that, that if there's a interest, if there's a buyer who's coming in, then everybody would be happy um, to, to shake hands on that. That's that's how I would look at it. That said, Derek, if, if, if that doesn't happen and Borna's hanging about for another year, uh, I'd use the, the old parlance of Ross Wilson, which is you'd just be totally relaxed about him running that down. It's not going to be big money that you're going to get for a Borna Ballas at this point, yeah. maybe a million quid or something like that. So yeah. I just think uh, if, if he is to stay, then so be it. You let him run down his contract and then he can depart in the summer. Um, he's on a good wage, um, but he can provide a, a number of options for Rangers in terms of um, the style of play. Um, for certain games, if you've got him in Ridvan, I, I think that left back position is strong enough for the Scottish Premiership. So uh, I, I'm totally comfortable if Borna goes or if Borna stays. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah As for I Sterling, to... uh, Derek uh, Sterling, I think is a done deal alongside Kieran Dowell, and yeah. um, that's the only two that I can say for certainty that that are, that are done. I know a lot of people have said Butland is done, but that's not my understanding. No. Um, I think that's still cool. got a bit to go. Um, yeah. Although. Uh, I think people are quite confident that that they can um, they can secure his, his signature. What I would say is, part of me is a little bit like, do they just need Jared Butland? That's the question. Oh. Uh, you look at Rob McCrory and how he performed against Celtic. Yeah. It's very very early days, and you probably do need a larger pool of information in terms of games to, to fully assess what he's capable of. But based on that game and. Certainly, the, the previous games that he's had, um, you'd have to say he's looking very, very, very promising as a number one. And uh, I think there must be a little bit of a temptation to gamble on that position and and see how he does. You can always move for someone else in January or, or next summer. But I suppose Rangers didn't make a decisive call last year and they've really, yeah. really, really paid for that decision this year. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think if Rangers had a if Rangers had Kel Roos, Aberdeen goalkeeper in this season, I don't think they would be looking at a trophy last season. I'm not saying they would have won the league, far from it, but I think they, they, they would have certainly done a lot better in the league. And um, there's a potential they could have got through one of those games at Celtic because. You look at the, the, the pure raw numbers around Alan McGregor and John McLaughlin, and I think it's something like 13 goals more conceded than there should have been based on XG. That's significant. Yeah, yeah. Lots of comments coming in with regards to uh, McCrory. Um, Bob says uh, we need cover. Johnny learn from uh, past mistakes. Yeah. Uh, an interesting point from Ross as well. He says that uh, we need a, a number one to come in with McCrory pushing them all the way for the shirt. We gambled with McGregor last year and this season. Don't want the club to gamble again uh, with this. But um, I, I'm with you. I think it, it's McCrory's shirt at the moment. Um, you can't deny. I mean, four clean sheets and and the match which he's, he's had, including two old fun games, a high pressure. European tie as well. Thought he was good against uh, Aberdeen last week. Also, um, he obviously gets uh, uh, all the games between now and the end uh, of the season. Um, and listen, I think it's his uh, shot to lose at the moment. I know he's highly rated at, at Rangers. Michael Beale thinks uh, the world of him. But um, yeah, there will be another goalkeeper, you'd imagine, coming in. But um, if it is Jack Butland, if that is a deal that gets over the line, you can't imagine him coming up the road and, and being ha happy be being number two, can you? So um, no, That's my point, Derek. I'm not saying that Rangers don't. I'm seeing a lot of comments saying, oh, no, you need another keeper. I know, yes, I agree. Rangers do need another keeper. But if you're signing Jack Butland on 45 grand a week or whatever it's going to be, and believe me, it's going to be there or thereabouts, are you wanting to sign him on that and then see Robbie McCrory play instead of him? You know, that doesn't make any sense from a financial point of view. If you're going to go and get Butland, he's going to be the number one. And yeah. he's going to be the number one for two or three years. So yeah. what then for Robbie McCrory? So there's a lot of um, plates spinning on that one, I think. And, you know, um, yeah, you're saying Butland, maybe McCrory steps up and, and fights someone and actually wins the jersey. But um, then you've got a massive problem on, for Butland's salary and, you know... Uh, yeah, you don't want someone on that level of wages at Rangers not not performing, not sitting on the not not yeah. coming onto the team. Um, you know, Rangers this season, if you look at kind of money that's in in the stand, 
Uh, I was told recently twenty three million pounds in terms of injuries and um, uh, and, and players not playing, just sitting in the stands. You know, uh, twenty three million pound worth of wages. So yeah, that's huge, absolutely huge. Yeah, can't um, have that again. Yeah, right. We're getting inundated with comments coming in here. Uh, Alan Wright, just on talking about goalkeepers, says, Hi, Derek. Did you see Andy Firth was Keeper of the Year in the Welsh League? I think he plays for uh, Connors Key Nomads, if I'm not yeah. mistaken now, uh, Andy. Bring him home, I think, uh, at Alan's point. <laughs> um, I think he played once, did he? I played a half at Kilmarnock at an end-of-season game, I'm sure, uh, uh, Andy Firth. But, um, yeah, um, well, well, well done on Andy down there in the... In the Welsh League. This is an interesting point, Johnny. I want to get your, your take on it. DK says, uh, Derek, can you discuss all the B players we've just released? Big money was spent on them. Academy with very little return. Uh, this is reports we've seen, uh, of course, uh, um, doing the rounds that apparently Rangers are about to release a number of uh, B team players. Uh, players this summer. Some of the names that have been mentioned include Tony Watson, um, uh, Tony Weston, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Charlie Lindsay, uh, likes uh, uh, Lewis McKinnon, um, Alex Kabatke, who came up from uh, Chelsea, of course, uh, Kelsey Ewan, Harley Ewan, and, and Kevin Zibutaru, the, the Romanian lad, uh, as well. Um, host of players get set to depart by all accounts. Uh, Johnny, no surprise that there is a, a point in time. You just can't can't keep these young lads forever, can they? So uh, um, it's one of those ones. But uh, is it slightly concerning that um, based on the fact that we're not seeing many make, make it through to the senior level uh, and a number of players are about to be released? Yeah, well, I mean, there's always going to be players released from an academy. That's what happens yeah. every year. Um, so I don't think there's anything new there. Uh, some of the names that are that are, are mentioned are players that have been brought in, maybe have, just haven't worked out. Yeah. Tony Weston was obviously one that arrived with uh, a lot of fanfare, someone who had, I think, done a fair amount of uh, good work at Blackpool and, and, and people were excited about, but he's had a couple of loans. And when you go on loan to a lower league team and you don't make any impact, it's hard to imagine that you're going to come back and... and, and Set the header alight at Rangers, so I think uh, it's it's totally understandable that, that that they've got to make space for the next crop, and and that's what's happened. Hopefully, these lads can go on and find other clubs and 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 get themselves um, into a position where they can have good careers and uh, prove the, prove the club wrong. Ultimately, at the end of the day, yeah. and you know we've seen players do that in the past, and yeah. uh, hopefully, these guys can do that too. Yeah, uh, CGM55 says uh, B-team releases uh, is a circle of life. Yeah. Most of them will find clubs at a level. Uh, that is no disgrace yet. Absolutely. Very few uh, make it through and become uh, first-team regulars uh, at Rangers. Um, so, yeah, it uh, lo looks like there is going to be a bit of an upheaval, not only in the first team, but also uh, in the B team uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, one to keep an eye on. Let's get to a couple of more comments that are coming in here just now. Um, this is an interesting one. Mark Wilson uh, raises a point um, just on, off the back of our chat about Dujon Sterling. Johnny he says, uh, do we look to move Tavon? Um, I've seen some, <laughs> I see you shaking your head here. For me, he is one of the uh, the players that, 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 that unless there is a... a uh, a bid that is made, that is uh, eye-watering perhaps, that is uh, too tempting to turn down, then James Tavenier is here to stay. Um, what's, your, what's your views on that? Yeah, 100%. You know, James Tavenier is a massive leader in and around the club. He's signed a new contract recently. He's the captain. Um, I think he's key to Michael Beale's rebuild. He gets on well with the manager and the manager trusts him. I think he should play a little bit less. Than he has been, you know, he's not a spring chicken anymore, and I know he's physically robust, but yeah, I don't think it'll do him any harm to play forty games as opposed to fifty-five uh, games a season. Um, but to, to to sell him or move him on or whatever, no, I just don't think that's uh, that's that's a non-starter for me. And um, yeah. we're not anywhere near that stage yet when it comes to Tav and his sort of decline as a player. Uh, I think he's. Of a, of a conditioning that he can play on for a couple of seasons yet at a very, very high level indeed. And we all know what James Tavernier brings to the table in terms of sheer quality, in terms of numbers. Okay, he's not a natural defender. It's not what he relishes. You know, he's a guy that goes forward and puts the ball in the box and finishes at the back post. That's what James Tavernier is good at. Um, his one-to-one -one defending is, is, is less... So, although I still think it's actually not as bad as people say, but um, no, I'll always 
defend James Tavernier. I know there's some people who really don't like that, but uh, no, uh, he's, he's the best one that, that, that I think Rangers have had since uh, Gary Stevens. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, points coming in, just to, there was a lot of points coming about moving Tav uh, further up the field. Um, lots of points on that. Scottish Sniper says, I mentioned on the Facebook page moving Tav up the field and I got slated for it. Um, and that's Not as badly uh, as Derek gets slated for it whenever he brings it up. <laughs> yeah, listen, I've said on record, you know my views on it. Um, he should be playing as a centre forward for Rangers. Um, just, just as an experiment from here until the end of the season, at least. I'm sure he'd be absolutely delighted with that, Tav. He said it on record as well. But um, listen, just off the back of that, there, there was a comment that came in um, just talking about Lovelace. Ali Quinn says, uh, does Lovelace get a wee run in the last couple of games? I see. So, Johnny, of course, he came on. I had a, a bit of a cameo uh, on Saturday. I think uh, that spoke volumes that Alfredo Morelos wasn't uh, brought on at any point. Um, can we see Zach uh, featuring more from here until the end of the season? Uh, I think he's still got a bit to go, Derek. He might get the odd um, sub appearance. I think he's, he's a big enough lad that he can he can certainly cope with the physicality of the games. But I've yet to see him really look like he's absolutely ready to make the jump. He's still a kid. He's 17. So that's yeah. that's no criticism. Um, and uh, But I wouldn't expect Lovelace to, to start. I mean, I, I may be totally wrong with that. But when I asked Michael Beale about it in a, in a presser uh, last week, he said, you know, none of these guys are quite ready for it. There's a lot of talent there, but none of them are quite ready to make the jump. So um, I'd, I'd be very surprised, put it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but listen, I think uh, between now and the end of the season, of course, we've got uh, Hibs coming up, uh, Hearts, at, uh, Hearts at home, the final home game of the season before uh, finishing the season uh, away to St Mirren. So I'm sure there will be uh, other opportunities for him and other uh, young players before now and the end of the campaign. Um, OK, I think that'll do us there. A big thanks to Johnny. Enjoy your holiday jetting off to, to Italy. Um, and uh, thanks to everyone for interacting with the show as ever. It's greatly appreciated. Just a, a quick reminder once again, if you haven't taken advantage of the website offer we've got on just now, um, you can get access to uh, a full year's uh, worth of content on the site for just £12. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe to sign up. You also get entered into a draw uh, for uh, lunch for three uh, at the Blue Sky Lounge restaurant with a club legend on the 3rd of June. It is an outstanding offer we've got on the website just now, folks, so don't miss out. Um, OK, we'll be back uh, again tomorrow. Me and Stevie Clifford will be back on tomorrow, but until then... Uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Bye for now.